end of the road. End of the road. All right, here's my options. I could slow down and I could U-turn. That's not a lot of fun. I could stop, get off the bike and wrestle it around. That sounds like way too much work. I could put on a side stand and try to do a pivot. But I think the ground might be too soft. Or I can use the momentum of the bike and the lay of the land and let that do the work for me. So I'm gonna do a slide and pivot. <laughs> So the slide and pivot is just what it sounds like. It's a combination of using the rear brake to slide the back end of the bike around about 90 degrees. And then you're using the power in the clutch to pivot by spinning the back tire to pivot the other 90 degrees. So you end up with a 180 degree turn. When you do this U-turn, the idea is to find the right environment. The places where you're gonna find this most advantageous is going to be in slippery surfaces where the bike already wants to slide. If you're making a U-turn to go up a hill, so if you're already going down the hill and you need a U-turn to go back up the hill, again, the bike is much more likely to slide naturally. It makes it easy. Or if you have very flat ground without big ruts in it and you can get a nice momentum in and get the bike spun around. When you choose to do a slide and pivot, You've got to make the decision before you get to the point you actually need it. You've got to have enough momentum to start the slide in a straight line and then get the bike kicked out sideways. So during the approach, you'll disengage the power, pull that clutch in, and then you've got to stomp on that back brake. Get it locked up so you're in an inline straight slide. Then you kick the handlebars left and right. That'll kick the bike out sideways and the bike will start to slide out with the back end trying to go beyond the front. As the back end slides around, you need to steer the front to continue going in that same direction. It's almost like driving in the snow. If you're sliding sideways, you steer the direction you want to go. You carry that slide all the way into the 90 degree. If the back end starts to go too far, if it gets in front of you, you apply just a little bit of front brake and that controls the back slide so it doesn't walk all the way around and you don't have the back end slide out from underneath you. Once you get that rear brake locked up and that bike starts to slide sideways, the bike's gonna wanna start to angle and slide out from underneath you. You need to move your body and stay on top of the bike while it's sliding. If you stay vertical and the bike leans and moves away from you, it's gonna slide out from you and you're gonna low side the bike. That's not such a big deal, but it's not what you're trying to do. The worst case scenario is that bike starts to lean and you get nervous and you let go of the rear brake. If you do that, it can hook up traction and then it'll high side you and catapult you off in front and then the bike will come tumbling after you. And that's considered bad. So once you start this, you're committed. Either you slide the bike until it falls into the ground or you do it until it's done right. But you cannot let off the brake once you begin the rear brake slide. Once you come to a 90 degree, come to a complete stop. Now it's time to do the pivot. We do this with power. So once that bike comes to a complete stop, Turn the handlebars full lock in the direction you want to go and then lean the motorcycle in that direction. If you're not tall enough or strong enough to lean the motorcycle, you can't do this part of the technique. Crank it over full lock, lean it the direction you want to go, get the revs up, throw the clutch, the back of the bike begins to spin and it pivots all the way around that front wheel. Make sure you keep that handlebar full lock. Once the bike's pointed in the new direction, Pull the clutch back in to get back in control of the bike, stand it up, and then ride off in the new direction. When you get very good at this, the slide and the pivot will be almost seamless. You won't see yourself come to a stop. But when you're first learning, go ahead and put a little pause in there. Don't expect to get this right the first time you do it. If you're gonna try this technique, Expect you're gonna drop your bike at some point. So take off the panniers, make sure you're not gonna damage things or injure yourself, but also make sure you're in a, on soft ground or mud or someplace where when the bike drops, you're not breaking things. Now, if you are a shorter rider, I mentioned that if you're short, you've gotta be able to get that bike leaned over. There are still environments where you, as a shorter rider, can really make use of this. And I mentioned one of the places is going downhill and making a U-turn to go back up the hill. And the reason this works is that when you do the slide turn, the bike's gonna slide down the hill, you're gonna drop your foot on the high side of the hill. 
That means that you're that much taller. The bike is naturally leaned over and you can do the slide and you can do the pivot. If you've got a bike with ABS and traction control, you're gonna need to make sure your ABS is turned off so you can get the brake slide and you need to turn off your traction control so you can get that back wheel spinning. For those of you that run auto clutches or ride DCTs, have no fear, you get to do this technique as well. The only difference is, instead of adding throttle and throwing a clutch, you just add throttle. If you really think you've got the slide and pivot down good, you can do it to the right. But no, you're not gonna be able to drop the inside foot and you cannot let go of the rear brake. This is a technique that's really common in the dirt bike world. We do it all the time. But on a big heavy adventure bike, it's not as common. The slide turn or the, the braking portion is a very easy technique to use all the time. But the pivot requires things to be just right. You need to have flat ground. You need to be able to get slide on it. And if you're heavily loaded, that's not gonna work either. Because if you have the traction, the bike's just gonna launch in a new direction. This is the same reason why if you can't get the bike leaned over, if you don't have the height or strength to lean it, and the bike is too vertical, it will also go off in a straight line. So it's a very unique technique for just the right environment for just the right riders.